is actually food as we're doing these uh, interviews. But we are here to let you take a break from the day. Oh, oh, sure thing. <laughs> All right, we are here with the Business Lunch Podcast. My name is Ryan O'Neill Knight. And again, we don't have lunch yet. We are still looking for a sponsor to provide our lunches, but we want you to take a break throughout your lunch and throughout your day to use this lunch time to chat about business and how we can really analyze how the day is going, how the month is going, and how the year is going as we're going towards our goals. So for those that don't know who I am, I'm one of the co-founders of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network. We work with entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage really to figure out what stage their business is in and then help them create a strategy to grow their companies exponentially. And so with this podcast, we are actually following the journey of my company, The Detailing Nights, we provide mobile waterless car cleaning. We go to people's houses or their offices, clean their cars on the spot without water and our eco-friendly cleaning supplies. And what I'm most proud of is our youth entrepreneurship program. So we teach high school and college students and even those out of school how to start their own businesses by using a mini version of our company. So now we are in the process of expanding. We're looking to expand across Canada into the US, but we want to do it with support from resources that exist because if you know my story, DK has had its ups and downs, but as we're building back, we want to make sure to do it right. So today we are blessed to have uh, one of the managing partners of the Black Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, Doug Minter, who also runs the Propel Mastermind program. So again, brother, I appreciate you being on today. Thanks. And so initially, we want to just kind of find out a bit of the personal side of Doug. So we usually do this or that. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to tell you two items, and you let me know which one you prefer. Okay. All right. So All right. this or that, eating out or eating in? Eating out. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I like eating in, too. I mean, I like both. <laughs> nah, you can't let, listen, which side of the fence are you on? Get off the fence here. All right. I, look, I, I, I like to cook, so... Oh, eating in is better. I did not know that. Right? Yeah, but I like nice. eating out, too, because that's your go-to dish that you cook? The go-to, I, I cook a mean prime rib. Really? Dude, okay, I got a I'm mean gonna, prime I'm rib. Gonna hold that. I got a mean prime rib. All right. Are you a morning person or a night person? Morning. Uh, we are totally opposite. I'm, like, so night. Uh, <laughs> would you prefer remote work or in person? Ooh, <laughs> I'm a hybrid. Really? You're getting I, used to the I like the remote, both. Yeah? I like both. Uh, I like a little bit of both. Okay, cool, cool. Are you Apple or Android? Apple. Ooh, okay. I All Apple. Apple. Either. Yeah? All Apple. All I can't, do, I can't do Android. <laughs> the chamber gave me an Android phone to use. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> I think I turn it back in. And so soon we're going to be starting, I'm going to be starting my journey for the best oxtail in the GTA. That's like my oxtail hunter wow. podcast. Do you, know, oxtail. do you know a great place to get oxtail? No. Okay. So no. We, I'm going to have to give you some notes on where to get some good oxtail. Yeah. I mean, I got the <laughs> patties down pat. Uh, stush patties. Oh, true. Come yes. on. Hey, yeah, stush patties got the best patties. patties. Shout out to Opal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> stush patties. I got my patty down. Mm -hmm. I do not have my oxtails. Okay. I don't have that down pat yet. So. All right. So, hey, I will definitely share my notes for that. Okay. But being part of the chamber and now as an entrepreneur, I'm always trying to figure out what are the best resources to be able to not have what happened before. And again, update if people have not heard. I have gone through a bankruptcy in the past where the company, you know, grew exponentially and they kind of crumbled under the weak foundation. So I'm curious beyond uh, companies having weak foundations, what have you seen reasons that companies fail based on uh, the work you're doing with the chamber? Uh, I think first is mindset. Interesting. You, you gotta have a CEO mindset. And you, 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 those attributes, um, consistency mm. is where I see people fall off. Okay. Right? They're not yeah. consistent. Mm. Um, the, the other thing is the, the imposter syndrome. Right? right. Not I feeling feel like yes. you have a place at the table that you're supposed to. And I deal with that mm. to this day. Right? right. And, and, and that imposter syndrome is, is a big one. And then the other thing is 
using racism as a crutch. Interesting. And right. we've had a lot of that kind of bubble up over the last couple of years. Yeah, that, that, that's a, you know, you're going to have to deal with racism. If you're outside mm -hmm. of Africa, you have to deal with racism, right? right? So in Africa. And even in Africa, Africa there's so issues, like right? It's, global. A, it's a global problem. It's a virus, right? It's like right. coronavirus. We mm -hmm. all have it. Right. No matter what shade, color, hue, background, heritage, we're all dealing with racism. Mm -hmm. And you can't use it as a crutch. It's not a reason why someone should do business with you. Okay. They should do business because you're a good business person, you have a quality product, and they want to purchase that, that product or service. Right, right. However, you can't mm. leverage racism as the reason why somebody should do something for you. Ah. Do something for me because you want to be inclusive. You're, you're culturally con conscious of the racism that exists. Mm. So you're willing to open the door and, and, and we sit out at the table. But once we're at the table, mm. my quality and my service has to be the reason. And we've seen that a lot with the new like black entrepreneur loan programs that banks are putting out. So the one side of it is that racism side. We're like, okay, you guys have doors close to us. And then they open the door and then we're seeing the quality is not there. So people are still getting declined right. because just because the door is open, the core or the the criteria hasn't been reduced. So now getting entrepreneurs up to that baseline, how, what are you seeing is missing with operations side now? Like why aren't we at that high quality to be able to qualify for these loans? I, I, I'll tell you this, the, 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 the first marker of a great loan package is mm -hmm. the financial statements. Right, yes, yes. Right, so an underwriter pulls open your file, mm -hmm. You've got your marketing plan and all your narrative, the story of who you are. They're going to skip past that first. <laughs> They're going to go over here to page 20 and uh, look at the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow analysis. If that looks good, then they might go back and say, these numbers look pretty good. More, right? yeah, let, yeah. Let, me, let me see the story. Let me actually pay attention. Right? And, and so mm -hmm. most people, what I've seen a lot in poor business plans, they've done a great job on the narrative. Mm. The financials are kind of weak. Right, right, and so right. you've got to have those financial statements muffed them up. Yes. You've got to show seasonality. You've got to show them everything that's going on financially. Right. And then have a great story to tell on top of it. And so like, that's a winning be package. more purposeful in the financials, making sure that's yeah. tight. That's got to be tight. Right. And right, that right. takes looking at an accountant. And mm -hmm. then the other thing, Ryan, in those financials, if you're looking for money, the yes. money that you're looking for needs to be incorporated in those financials. Right. And don't just give me projections right. and then ask for 250000 and don't take that two fifty and put it inside the plan. How much is that two hundred fifty mm. going to cost? Yes, yes. And make sure that your financial projections absorb that cost. Right. So I'm curious now. We want people to engage with the chamber because I know I'm using it. I'm a member, and because as an entrepreneur, we're always looking at those foundational elements and where to get support. So a person that doesn't know what the chamber does, how would you explain to them why they should engage and what, can it, what it can do for them based on if they're just starting out or if they're already operating? So there's three things that people need. Mm. Every business, you need mentors, right. you need advisory, coaching, and you need your peers. Okay, that'd be different than mentors? Right. Okay. So you need other business owners that at your level to push you, ah. to talk to, to commensurate with, to say, hey, how did you use QuickBooks? How did you use, what CRM are you using? And why do you mm. use that? Yes, and how yes. has it been efficient for you? Because they're actively doing the same types of strategies that you're doing, mm. peer to peer learning right. is one of the things we don't talk about a lot but uh, in surveys before I came here from the US yeah. I saw a survey where it said who are the top five people every business owner goes to when they have a problem number one on the list was not the bank okay number one number two on the list was not advisors and mentors number okay. one on that list was peers 
Really? Other business owners. Okay. So one of the reasons why you want to come to the chamber is because we're going to put you in a network mm. with other business owners so you can interact with them. Makes sense. And it's interesting because I know, hey, those days where a payroll's coming up at the end of the week and it's not in the bank yet and you're getting very uh, anxious or even just, hey, things happen in business and you get anxious and being able now that I think of like, I'll be under my desk, I'm like, man, I just need, I don't want to come out on my desk right now. But uh, it's a friend that's also an entrepreneur that I'd be able to call and talk to. And usually they've been there to say like, listen, man, it's not as bad as you're actually making it out to be. Here's some options. Here's some ways that you can deal with it. And then it's like you get re rejuvenated by being, and I couldn't call my mom about that because she's going to be like, yo, go get your government job. Like I told you, you shouldn't even be an entrepreneur. It's too risky. You see, I told you it was risky. Right. But a peer that's within entrepreneurship or a business owner, I could definitely see just from my own experience how those conversations, it can get you out of the dark place quicker. And then I'm not calling the bank, letting them know that, it's about to go into overdraft or something. <laughs> right, right. And you can't so, have that conversation with certain people. We call that Friday night financing. <laughs> and I've done it. Right? I had an $8 million insurance agency. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I remember payroll was 15000 a week at one point. Oh, that's right. Heavy. A week. Yes. A week. <laughs> that money had to be there. Yes. And I remember um, one of my clients... A mm. couple of years earlier, came to me and said, look, I'm having trouble. I, I'm not going to be able to pay my insurance premium. And he gotcha, was huge. Gotcha. He was huge. Big janitorial right. firm, multi-million dollars. He's mm. doing great now. But mm. he said, look, I, I need to lower my threshold on my insurance policy so I can afford it. Okay. And what can we do? And yeah. I arranged a payment arrangement. I was like, well, what's going mm. on? He said, dude, we just lost a major contract Yes. that was millions of dollars and you know, he had to go to his staff, all of his janitors, and say, I can't pay you for 30 days. Ooh. I will pay you, mm. but I need you to keep working Ooh. without pay. Mm. However, right. he turned his company into what's called an ESOP. It's an employee-owned organization. Right, right, right. So the employees were given an incentive to eat those 30 days. Gotcha. By 100%. Part yeah, so basically oh, he gave parts of the wow. company to them. Yes, yes. To say, I need you for the long haul. We're going to be okay, but I need some breathing room because yeah. I can't cover payroll. And he was honest. And that communication And went huge. directly, and he was so good to his people before that, right. they were like, we got you. We'll, we'll figure this out. Yeah. He worked with each of them, wrote them reference letters, so that if they needed to go to the banks to get some short-term loans mm -hmm. or whatever, he covered it. If they had credit cards, he, he made deals with each one of his employees, all 50 of them. Excellent. Okay. Whoa. Learning that strategy, mm -hmm. you're only going to learn that from peers, from other business owners, because oh, that's not okay. something that's in a book. Oh, how to cover payroll. Yeah, yeah. How to cover payroll when you have no money. There's no book on that, right? <laughs> um, you can't Google that. Oh, man. Absolutely. Right? Not. So peers allow you to get information that you can't Google. Mm, right. Right? And when I had and this, I, and I went through, yes, yeah, from experience, yeah. and I went through the same situation. Mm. My employees, I, uh, there was one or two employees, I just couldn't pay them. Right, right. I had an employee that stepped up and said, Doug, I know you're having some issues. I'll pay, I'll cover everybody's payroll. You pay me back. Ooh. Because I believe in this team. Yes. And I don't want anybody. I think we have a great team, and I want to contribute to making that better. Man. And I looked at her, and I was like, wow. Right. That and that can only but, come from. But I had a meeting with a them. High culture. You got to be honest with you. Yeah. You got to say, look. Big communication. We're we're struggling here. Right. Yes. And I just got this temporary struggle. I don't have any other way out. Right. And they they she she stepped up said I'll cover the payroll. She had a little extra money. Right. Right. She's like, I don't mind doing that for us. And because the way that you treated they believe, us right. so good and you paid us way more than anyone else right, right. to be here. So, yeah. That's wild. Peer to peer networking is huge. And that's something that, like you said, it's not in many books that I've read to say. Well, I think they allude to it based on 
like having a strong network. But a peer goes beyond a strong network because we can have connections on LinkedIn and say that our network is strong, but that person that you can call, how many people in that Rolodex will take that call when you're really down to say like, hey, it's like I, I have nothing to give right now. I need to receive, you know, that, like, that shift. And a lot of times it really comes from you giving from before. Like you mentioned, right. the way that you treated your employees, you were giving. And then it, there was time where it came back. But if you're not in the mindset of giving, when you're ready to receive, a lot of times there's nothing out there for you to receive. Every quarter, yeah. my employees could pick what professional development they wanted. Ah. Anything they wanted, they had a range of dollars. Red, red. Take a class, mm. go to get this certification, improve your knowledge. And I knew that mm. by doing that, they may leave and go somewhere else. I didn't care. I wanted red, red. loyalty, ah. and I paid for that loyalty. Love that. And so which, I know you're managing the mastermind, the Propel Mastermind. So I do want to definitely ask you about that and why people should get into it. I know a few people that are in the mastermind and definitely raving about it. So why is it so important to be in a mastermind? It might allude to that peer thing that you're just talking about, but I'm curious. What yeah, I think, I think the, uh, a mastermind allows you to one, get the knowledge you need to execute. Really, mm. we, you know, our advisors, you get access to an advisor first. And the advisor right, right. saying, hey, here's a topic, marketing. Here's some things you should do mm. to execute on your marketing. Right. Right? And then we put people in a hot seat. Okay, let's step you up, Ryan. Put mm. detailing nights in a hot seat. What you doing with your marketing? What does that look like? What are, what are you doing mm. every day? Right, right. Right? It's that accountability piece. And then you have your peers weighing in, yeah. observing talking about mm. hey Ryan did you think about doing this or hey I can connect you with this person that can help you solve for that issue and help gotcha. you execute so yes. it's all about the execution right it's all about getting support so you can execute on what you need to do and what stages of business are able to go through? yeah so typically our masterminds we have bunch of different programs so mm -hmm. business plan writing program we have a 90-day accelerator program that feeds all of those feed into the masterminds gotcha. and the masterminds is really for companies between 10,000 in revenue and a hundred thousand okay gotcha. so our goal is to get you to your first hundred thousand ah, right excellent once you get to your first hundred thousand we have other programs for mm -hmm. the more quote-unquote advanced seasoned firms right. um, to get you to your first million Okay. And now, when we talk about the Mastermind, I feel like that's the flagship program. Right. What are some of the other initiatives or programs that Chamber yeah. has that people might not know about? So we have a business plan writing program gives mm. you, that's 90 days long. Gotcha. But you have six months of access to business, what we think is the Cadillac of business uh, plan writing software. Yes. And, it, and we have done that in partnership with CIBC. Excellent. Um, and BMO and some other um Black Opportunity Fund, other partners have kind of wrapped around that and said, this is what we want the plans to look like. Right, right, right. And so that's what the software is driven to do, is to give the banks what they need and to help you easily go through that. So um, we have an accelerator for the startup idea firms who okay. don't know what they don't know. So that's more idea stage. Yeah, more kind of idea stage, okay. early, early startup, right? You haven't really made more than 10 grand. You don't know what you don't know but you, right. you know you want to be a business owner. Yes. And, and we help you kind of, hey, here's some things to know. So you know the whole picture, a holistic think thought process around business so you can absorb the information and put it where it needs to go. Because gotcha. information overload is a big deal. Right. Absolutely. Sometimes some and of our people are saying, they're giving you. me too much information. <laughs> like we, we struggle with that, right? And we're yes. trying to retool our programming and say, okay, sorry, we didn't mean to throw up. <laughs> we didn't mean to give you the whole kitchen sink, but we did. Yeah. And hey, you can give it all and then filter. Like, okay, yeah, what, pick what you need. Yeah. Just At look, you if you don't understand all this, just see it. Yes. Just just let it absorb and let it swim <laughs> in it. And yes. then pick the things that you need right now. Right. Because everything is time centered. So we teach from a quarterly basis. Um, mm -hmm. We are starting two new cohorts within the masterminds. One is uh, clean tech and sustainability. So firms Excellent. in the climate or sustainable, mm -hmm. right? You, you can count, uh, if you use recycled products mm -hmm. 
in your things that you sell, you're in that clean tech sustainability okay. category. Okay. Um, we have another program mm -hmm. um, that's called Female Founders in STEM. We're trying to encourage academia, you know, these, these black women that are yes. in academia and have this mm -hmm. idea, but don't know anything about business. We want you. Yes. Right? If sense. you're in science, if you have any kind of science, tech, engineering, math-based business, that's a great cohort for female founders. And we Love really that. want to encourage females to go into these um, technical fields that have been male-dominated. Solid. And I know we're part of the Black Entrepreneurship Ecosystem together with mm -hmm. our organizations. And now that there's 40, I know when you initially came up to Canada, you mentioned a lot of this didn't exist. A lot of the different organizations, I think there might have been 10 if we were actually counting. But now that there's over 40, what is your vision for how these nodes can connect? Like, how can we strengthen how this ecosystem is working together? Yeah, so the, there's a psychology part of it. And then there's the execution part. Right. And I do want you to go a bit deeper to the psychology side of it. So okay. So don't, la like, don't hold back because okay. that has okay. shifted a lot of how I've engaged just with anybody in my life, actually. But it's really interesting. So uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Edwin J. Nichols, mm -hmm. um, he's out of Washington, D.C. He's 92 years old, I think. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. That's and he's wild. still vibrant. Yes. He, he's just as energetic as you and I. He's amazing. But he taught me the axiology of cultures. Right. And what an axiology is, is the thing of highest value mm. to a group of people, okay. to a group. And it's not a judgment. Mm. It's just observations from his research. Right. So people of European descent, their axiology is around the object, control, mm elevation power hmm. right okay um and again it's not a value judgment this is not these aren't stereotypes these, right. this is more of psycho psychological thinking of groups it's of like laying out the data yeah like it's, it's just it is what it observe. is it's fact-based right. it's not yeah. an opinion right it's right. not it because there's pros and cons to every axiology right right because right. 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 if you're about the object material things are important you take care of them Mm. if they're important to you. Gotcha. So that's a good thing, yes. right? We want you to take care of your home and keep it updated. And mm. you see that in European culture. They take right. care of their stuff. Yes, yes. I've had this shirt. I've had this sweater for 10 right. years. Right, same jeans. Yeah, yeah like they take care, but they take care of their yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> um, but it can also be, you know, something to be considered. If I'm going after the object, it mm. it these axiologies affect how relationships are built. Okay, yes. So people of Asian descent, mm -hmm. right? People from India or China or uh, anywhere in Asia, right? It's cohesiveness of the group. Okay. Right? They oh. walk as, as a total group, very cohesive, similar thought patterns. Mm -hmm. um, they may go to their elders and mm -hmm. seek approval from people within the group before right. they do make any major decisions. Gotcha. Right? Um, mm. People of indigenous descent, mm. it's nature, land, okay. the great spirit. An example of that is we do land acknowledgments. Right, right. Why do we do that? Because it's their axiology. It's, it's speaking group. directly to the things that are important to their axiology. Yes, yes. And lastly, people of African descent, it's relationship. Okay. Member to member, one-on-one. -on -one. Huh. Me and you, sitting out right here. Right. That those are things, I will go home today and they're like, hey, how was your day? I did this podcast with Ryan Knight. Mm. I want to smile about that. It right. felt good because I feel like it. it's it's the relationship. That's where we feel most comfortable. Right. So we kind of have to give ourselves some grace. Yeah, and time. Time because and grace, because if we're relationship-driven, mm. one-on-one, mm. we're not cohesiveness of the group. That's not our natural axiology. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And people say, well, where do these axiologies come from? It comes from ancient history. Uh, so think about if I'm of European descent, where are they located? In areas that are colder than people of African descent. Mm. If you're in a cold environment, Canada's a great example of that, right? 
You got three months to plant your crops. Yes. That's it. Or you will die. And it's scarcity. Scarcity. Like whatever so the harvest there protecting is. protecting the object only makes sense to people who are in these cold environments. And when you go mm-hmm. back and look at the history, Europe doesn't have a lot of natural resources. Exactly. Right? Very There's true. things that don't exist in Europe. Yes. At all. Right. Some trees, some animals, just things that you need. Right. Salt, gold. Mm. You're not mining in Europe for a ton of gold. Right, right. Right, unless you're in Russia, the further, mm. you know, out. But there's not a lot of natural resources, so the Can object imagine. is important. Yes. Which, that's why they spread out, to go get what? Objects and bring them to back. To get objects and bring them back. Unfortunately, some of those objects right. or people. were people, oh, right? <laughs> but that's that's where that came from. Right. You look at people in Asia, you know, the cohesiveness of the group. Mm. Religion was very important holistically to the entire group. There, there, there wasn't, you know, mm. broad differences in religion. So as you have one religion that kind of dominates the way you move, cohesiveness uh, of the group kind of starts making sense, gotcha, right? Yes. You look at how indigenous people operate. Nature is really important because the land was the central thing. Mm. The great spirit is part of nature. Nature was part of that spirit. Right. Nature yes. is a spirit, right? And so that, that's why you see that. Why, is, why are people of African descent focus more on one-on-one relationships. Well, mm. look at where we came from. Mm. Mother Africa, you didn't have a scarcity of food and right. supplies and resources. Right, right. You have everything. Right? True. Right. Just reach up and grab the mango, <laughs> eat it. Breakfast, lunch, yeah. Right, so good. I'm not concerned about the object because the object is plentiful. Yes. Okay. Mm. Well, do we care about land? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, land, geography, great spirit, those things, just because that's not your main axiology don't mean doesn't mean that you don't have attributes of all the other axiologies. Yes, They're yes. just not as high a priority. Right. But the spirit is really close to the relationship because there's a spirit to mm-hmm. that relationship. Okay. Right? Like that's how it makes the connection. Yeah, but that's how it makes mm-hmm. the connection, but that, it's not the big thing. That's mm-hmm. why we were able to adopt multiple religions in Africa. Okay. Think about, you know, the influence of Islam into Africa. Think sure. about the influence of Christianity, even Judaism. Everything is was accepted in Africa, uh, yes, right? Because yes. as long as it's spiritual base, we're good with that. Mm-hmm. We're concerned about the relationship. Yes. The spirit stuff, we, we can accept all of it because it all came from us anyway. Uh, right. right? Now, all yes. the religions came out of Africa anyway. Yes, it yes. came out of the nature of how we were mm-hmm. anyway. If the original people came out of Africa, the original thoughts came out of Africa, right. the original right. religions started somewhere. You could connect and see the similarities between all the religions and ancient African religions. Absolutely. Right? Yes, yes. You can see all that. So that's neither here nor there, but what, what, what is important is the relationship because there's nothing right. else. That's why we dance. That's why we play music. Because so we had the time listen. and resources to do that. And that's where I'm curious, like, how do we get back to that? Like, because now here we're in Canada, we're not as connected on an individual basis on a broader scale. So really coming back to, like, what are you seeing is missing that we can strengthen that back up? I, I, I think the biggest missing link mm. is just the awareness mm. that this is how we operate. Ah, very true. Because once you're yes. aware, then you start thinking about relationships very important, more importantly, because you understand that, right? So right. Uh, we were supposed to be on the show last week, right? Yeah, yeah. And I missed that meeting. I never <laughs> missed meetings with you, and I you know, made a mistake, and I was hurt because I didn't yeah. want to hurt the relationship with you. And I feel it, I you feel me as hurt <laughs> because I know our relationship is strong. So it was like, right, but hey, things because happen. I yeah. wanted to continue to be strong, <laughs> I take that to heart, right? Yes. I take those things to heart, mm-hmm. and and that's just how we operate, right? But you have to also be mm-hmm. aware enough to know if I'm relationship based and I'm dealing with somebody who's object based. Okay, I got to operate not so much differently, 
but I got to be aware mm. that maybe the way I build a relationship with other cultures may mm. be different than the way I build it with you. Gotcha. Right? We're in the same culture, so there's things we that are baked into the system that we don't yeah, have to really yeah. worry about. But when I'm dealing with someone of European descent, we may build a relationship not based on anything culturally. Right. You, the different culture, mm. right? But we may say, hey, I'm trying to do this with this object, and I think it's in alignment with some things you're trying to do. And so we build that one-on-one -on -one relationship through right. the object, through the transaction. I've had so many people of mm. European descent that I've done business with mm. that they didn't need to have that one-on-one -on -one strong relationship before they did business. To execute. No. But with we're going to use the reverse. execution of the object ah. to build the relationship. And once we've done that, say, oh, I made money with Doug. Or, hey, yeah, I mean, best that friends. was a good, yeah, now we're <laughs> the best friends because we did something together. Uh, it went well. Now we have this strong relationship mm -hmm. that we can lean on. But right. That's where for us it's in reverse. Like before we go after the object together, yeah. we I have don't know have a you, I'm not doing business relationship. With you. Right. Uh, and that's why it's slower and more frustrating mm -hmm. sometimes because, you know, hey, do you know so and so and so and so? He's asking me you're to do this. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. going to ask around yes. to make sure you, you're a person that I want to spend this kind of time with right. and put this effort in. And maybe I'm not. Mm. Or maybe I am. It just depends on what your rules are. But then that's where the relationships precede future relationships. Because now as you're trying to build a new relationship, the ones that you forged already... They're going to vouch for it. Right. And so you need to be able to have that stored up. Like that kind of karma is really important. Right. So every relationship that you have is important for your future growth. Absolutely. Right. And I think understanding, mm. and he goes, you know, Dr. Nichols mm. goes into very much detail about epistemology and mm. logic and thought process so there's more than just the axiology gotcha, gotcha. there's all these other pieces that help you kind of work in the world mm. and especially in Canada you know the, the, what's impressed me about Canada is the entire mm. planet is not just here mm -hmm. it's in your neighborhood okay yes, yes. you understand like right. you can have diversity of the entire planet mm. within your neighborhood that, that doesn't yeah. that doesn't occur everywhere. Right. This is a unique place where that can occur. And I think we don't realize that as we're here in Canada, no. that it doesn't exist other places. No, I mean yeah. in, in the United States, there's you know every part of the world is represented in the United States, mm. right? But we don't live as close together gotcha. and as non segregated as you do in Canada. Okay. Gotcha. Like, my neighborhood, I can throw a stone at 30 countries mm. in my neighborhood. Here, in Canada. Here, in Canada. Oh, okay. I could not do that yes. in the United States <laughs> where I lived in Tennessee. I couldn't do right, that. Right? right. right? Mm. But we live together. We eat together. We're, you know, you go to a Portuguese okay. restaurant, everybody's in there. Yes, yes. You go to a Japanese restaurant, everybody's in there. Okay. There's no... Yes onesie twosie you go to a jamaica restaurant mm -hmm. everybody's getting their peas and rice yeah, like, yeah, like everybody's going in there <laughs> to get a patty or whatever yes. and you see the whole world everywhere you are in canada and that's one of the things i appreciate especially about the gta mm. you know it, it's 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 an amazing mix of people and, and in order to operate you got to understand if i'm in the south asian community maybe mm. maybe they do practice cohesiveness of the group. Um, and I may have to go through those layers of protections to right. get in. And understanding right. that, like you said, it allows you to engage with people yeah. and not from just blindness. Like you can actually understand a little bit more about their culture. And the more you, mm. again, build relationships within that culture, the more you right. learn, the more competent you are, the more you know how, to, how the lay of the land is. You know, if mm. you took my land away from me as indigenous persons, how do you think they feel? How do you think they operate? Exactly. There's going to be a paranoia. There's going to be mm. a fear and trepidation about engaging with anybody outside their culture. Especially all broken promises. Yeah, all you these know, broken so, promises. So yeah. they don't care who you are. Mm. All of y'all broke your promises with right. us. Yes. How am I supposed to 
do business with you if I can't trust you. Definitely. Right? And that's where I love how the mastermind with the chamber builds up that trust. And I know we forgot to touch on, so I guess we can, as we're wrapping up, how can people get engaged with the chamber? What's the best way to either become a member and to join the programs? Yeah, simplest way is mm -hmm. to go to our chamber websites, blackchamber.ca. Right. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about our programming, mm -hmm. um, you can go to Elevate blackbusiness.ca right. that's our programmatic website um, all of our programs that are funded by um, uh, fed dev and the federal mm -hmm. government shout out to federal government yes yes um, and you can look up all the information you need to know about any of our programs and services excellent excellent and again doug much appreciated i really appreciate you oh, coming thank through. you bro we i appreciate the relationship right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100 and as Hey, Detailing Nights grows as the community and our, all of our businesses grow. Definitely engage with this type of resource because you don't want to be at this alone. There's an ecosystem now that can really support you in your growth. We're tapping into it and we're part of it. So lean on us to make sure that we support you with the dreams and the goals that you have. Entrepreneurship can be a lonely up and down journey, but with the right support, with the right peers, the right mentors, the right advisors, it'll definitely smooth out the stress and allow you to progress. So thank you again. We'll see you next week at the Business Lunch Podcast.